Alright, hello everybody, Resonance here, and today I have yet another expert game for you guys as part of my Break the Meta series for Age of Empires 2. Throughout this series, I'll be showcasing a wide variety of creative and situational strategies while evaluating how they might stack up in the current metagame. We've all seen our fair share of galley rushes and knights, so today it's time for something completely different. Today, it's time for a full Byzantine's trash rush. This means nothing but skirmishers and spearmen versus the mighty trash-killing civilization, the Teutons, who are being piloted by the Break the Meta God himself, Doubt. This match even contains arson, a wolf rush, and a bunch of other mind-boggling yet equally brilliant plays in the context of the situation. That's what Break the Meta is all about. Thank you so much, Nivlat, for subscribing with Twitch Prime. Really appreciate all the support. Now, before we get too far into things, I do live stream regularly on Twitch. I'd love to have you there. Find my stream schedule by going there and then scrolling underneath the video player, or by following me on Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you in advance for doing all three. And as always, I appreciate the support, especially for the content to do for Games Beyond Just AOE 2, as it helps motivate me to continue producing more AOE 2 content, and also, helps grow the Age of Empires community by bringing in players from other communities. I see the live browser has crashed. And that has been corrected. Thank you, Chuko Chukung Fu, for your two-month reset. Now, normally I prefer to do these offline, but today we're doing it live. Why? Because I've had one crazy, crazy busy week as I've been trying to, you know, build up my channels and whatnot and see how this new return to my roots approach goes and so I've been just taking like non-stop calls and job interviews and whatnot so just been calls 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 proposals interviews all week and even right before this stream so now it's time to settle down and watch doubt versus MBL playing on Arabia now this is the Wolo Kingdoms mod for Age of Empires 2 HD edition, so if you have the Steam version, you can actually play it on Boobly with the Wolo Kings mod, and you can enjoy the new expansions if you so own them. This is being played on the patch 5.7 balance, which isn't really relevant in this particular game, and I haven't really introduced the players yet, so we'll take a brief moment to do that. We've got Doubt playing as the Blue Teutons on the top side of the map, and then we have MBL on the bottom side of the map. He will be our green Byzantines player, the Mass Trash Rusher. God, I love that. So. Wow, I'm getting so many subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter. Uh, thank you, Dark Berserk, as well. It's your one-year anniversary. And thank you, Ratsta. Really appreciate it. So. So. Byzantine's Full Trash Rush. Is the exact type of strategy that new players love to go for. I love to think is viable. But it just doesn't really work all the time. And today, I want to talk about what exactly is Break the Meta. And why on earth would it ever work here if it, like, never works ever? So, Break the Meta is about expert players showcasing us very situational strategies and then the exact type of, and then analyzing the exact situation, which allows what would normally be considered a terrible build order to actually be the optimal one. And in this case, the full Byzantine's trash rush is actually insanely good. And I can't wait to show you all exactly how that happens. Now, why is it normally bad? This is when the Vsauce music turns on. Well, one of the main problems with the Byzantine's Trash Rush is that it applies essentially no offensive pressure whatsoever. So what? You got a bunch of Skirmishers and Spearmen? The Skirmishers deal 2 damage, the Spearmen deal 3. You're dealing effectively no damage at all to any villagers once they have Loom, and they're gonna have Loom once the Feudal Age comes out. In addition to that, it can be a little taxing on your economy, unless you're the Byzantines, because the Byzantines get a very, very nice discount, as I will show you right here. Byzantines get a very nice discount of 25% on their Spearman line, their Camel line, and their Skirmisher line, which does come in handy for sure, uh, allowing them to, you know, save, save up enough resources and perhaps, if necessary, even abuse the market to just go to the Castle Age. Uh, while you're investing in your, you know, farms to try and support your, your trash army. But really, the main problem with it is it just doesn't apply a lot of pressure, and it's also, like, really weak to a lot of specific builds. And if your opponent happens to have a map that is, like, remotely defensible, then you're never going to get through those walls. 
Your opponent's gonna get to the Castle Age, and then he's just gonna eat your army for breakfast. Your, your trash units... They're called trash units because they don't cost gold. So this would be the Skirmisher, the Spearman, and the Scout Cavalry line of units. And they are trash in combat. They are very niche units that are just really counter units. So going for them as the bulk of your army kind of takes a madman. And you think it would be doubt in this situation, but it's actually not. <laughs> the real madman is MBL. What a twist. What a twist. <laughs> Welcome to the stream for you all. Uh, hello, Blomkin. Welcome, everybody. Happy to see you all here. Uh, and if anyone wants to help out, please do check out my Patreon page as well. Even a small, do uh, small dollar pledge does help out quite a bit. So, let's talk a little bit about the map. So, we've got a main stone for doubt at the front of his base. Where's his secondary stone? Oh my. That is very far away. So, right, right off the bat, we can tell that doubt has absolutely terribly placed stone in general. Like, this, there's a hill right here which is the perfect point for MBL to actually apply pressure to him if he wants. So now, both players are going to attempt to do some scouting. So if we go swap over to our, our doubt vision, let's see exactly what he can find. He's what, See, right now, he's checking the main gold mine. He's looking to see if there's any gold being mined at all. He did not see any, which signifies there may not be a men-at-arms tower rush or any sort of shenanigans along the way. And men-at-arms tower rush is a fairly prevalent strategy in the current Arabia metagame on the expansions due to the uh, weaker building HP. Notice how the buildings have significantly reduced HP. Uh, 550 instead of 900 in the Dark Age, and that's going to go up, I think, to about 750 in the uh, in the Feudal Age. Uh, as well as just the buffs to the Men-at-Arms line of units, uh, where the Men-at-Arms is an additional... The Men-at-Arms and above, they all have plus one extra attack bonus versus buildings, and then uh, tracking does cost reduced from 75 food to 50. All those combined make this strategy actually a lot stronger than normal, so it's good to see Doubt checking for that. Now, what does MBL see? MBL? He senses weakness. He's found it. The perfect spot to pressure, my friends. A secondary gold, a main stone mine, and some forge bushes. Now, Doubt, not born yesterday, not with those wrinkles, is already prepping a wall off. Because actually, let's be honest here, Doubt's map's pretty good. Seriously, it's pretty good. He can put a barracks over here, wall across this, and then this is an easy wall from here to here. However, there is no real safe way for him to actually mine stone this game at all if he gets pressured over here. And now, his gold mine, his main gold, very, very safe. Both players, by the way, getting double bid axe immediately is absolutely the correct play in 100% like, of situations. <laughs> Unless you're going through a fast castle age. Always gotta get that. And now, here comes the spearman. It's really weird uh, that MBL would actually build his barracks back here, but if I had to guess, it'd be because he was trying to hide it. Now, why why is he going for this build? Let's take a let's take a step back a little bit and we'll slow it down just a bit. So, why go for this build? Two reasons. One, he's scouted. He's seen the weakness. This is a very exploitable area. Yeah, again, MBL's checking. He's like, oh, this is an area that I can apply some serious pressure. Also, he's playing as the Teutons. What's the Teutons' eco bonus? Their farms cost less, making them a very powerful scout rushing civilization. And MBL, again, is scouting this. Look, he literally has his scout positioned right here, which makes it absolutely perfect. This is the ideal situation, or really the only situation, where a build like this could actually work. He sees the flags in the stable, signifying that they do indeed happen to contain more scouts. For some reason, there's sheep coming in here. <laughs> you know what else he's doing? He found a bunch of wolves. He's bringing them in with the, with the skirmisher. <laughs> I said this strategy doesn't apply enough offensive pressure. Not if you play it this way. Now, this spearman may end up getting picked off, but now Doubt's gonna have to make a tough decision because he wanted to go for a scout rush, which you would expect from the Teutons. So, when you're playing 4D chess, you want to be one step ahead of your opponent. What do you do? You send in the skirmisher, you delete them, and let the wolves run wild. If there are any T90 subscribers here, now is your time to shine. As these villagers have to deal with all three wolves. They know they can't fight them. <laughs> Just hilarious. And now they have to garrison inside the town center. So what did that accomplish exactly? A lot of town center idle time. There are nine villagers in here that are doing nothing. Instead, they're shooting at wolves. 
and as a result, not gathering any resources. Now they have to spend all this time walking, and there's still one wolf left, and Doubt's like, what the hell am I dealing with here? <laughs> the Byzantine's trash rush? Plus three wolves? That's right. Normally this build's too slow. Unless you bring some wolves in with you. Now, the cool thing about this build is that the Spearman kills the scout in three hits. It's such a hard counter. So if you actually predict the scout rush correctly and get away with it, what you end up doing is end up forcing your opponent to go into skirms too. Well, your skirms are 25% cheaper, so <laughs> you win this round. And that's the original scout, by the way. And here we go. Look at that damage being done to those scouts. But MBL on the retreat, because again, this strategy really lacks offensive presence, even with two sheep at the helm. Although, I do have to say the sheep helps. And doubt again, the master of weird games is actually going to wall off this side of the map and he's already walled off over there he actually has a very safe map it's his stone that's super vulnerable and this becomes important later so right now we're at a bit of a standstill because MBL is waiting for some reinforcements from his spearmen which do create very very quickly but he has to wait for them to walk all the way over there and again he's got no blacksmith he actually has a military that's so large military population of 18 and he's actually housed himself whereas doubt now, both players on equal villagers, that only has 10 military units. Why is that? It's because Scout Cavalry costs 80 food. It's so much more expensive, and the Scouts are so good against the Skirmishers. They're a strict hard counter. The Skirmisher has a minimum range, so they'll just die to the Scout so very easily, and it'll only take one damage per Javelin. So, you'd think that this would be a good build versus this, but then you'd be wrong, pal. Why? Because there are way too many spearmen in here. If microed correctly, this would be a disaster for doubt. An absolute disaster for doubt. All you have to do is make sure that you keep your spearmen targeted on the enemy scout cavalry, while your skirmishers attack the enemy skirmishers. There are just not enough skirmishers for doubt, that's the thing. Why? Because he didn't prep his eco for this. Because he didn't think that anyone would be crazy enough to go for this type of build. Now, doubt's making an interesting play here. He's decided to go aggressive. He's getting fletching on his skirms, which I think is the right play, but he's actually deciding to go aggressive and try and do some raiding. Well, we'll see how he does against the defensive civilization known as the Byzantines. And now he's gonna get shanked by these spearmen. He's gonna try and find a vulnerable location, but he just can't seem to get one. He's gonna have to pull out. Meanwhile, you know what's going on? Look at these spearmen dealing damage to this mill and making all of these farms wasted. One, two, three, four, five, six farms completely wasted, and those villagers forced to retest onto a straggler tree, and now Doubt has to segment his base off. Ew, disgusting. And meanwhile, he just can't get a good opening, and that's just because the Spearman is such a hard counter to the scout, and Doubt, he's just doing what the Teutons do. The Teutons open up with the scout rush almost every game because it's so good for them with the cheaper farms but there aren't enough skirmishers for doubt. Now, there is fletching for MBL now too, so no advantage there, and <sighs> Spearman creates so quickly, this is a home field advantage at play, a concept that we don't see that often in Age of Empires 2, but it's this idea that is, when you're fighting in your own base, you have a natural defender's advantage without any sort of like weird arbitrary aura crap or stupid things they put in other modern RTS games. Uh, instead, in this game, just because your unit production facilities are right here, you're able to reinforce and defend yourself quite easily. And Dow just didn't have enough units to apply pressure there and actually gets pushed back. <laughs> Even taking some extra javelins on that hill. Aye, aye, aye. He's going to have to pull back. And meanwhile, look at this army. This is not how you play Age of Empires 2 normally. He's literally just parked his army here and is killing this mill with spearmen. But the Spearmen are infantry units, they actually do deal three damage a hit to the mill. And he's actually gonna take down the mill. That's a hundred wood lost, and is going to force Doubt to build farms in really awkward locations, which I find to be absolutely hilarious. This Byzantine's trash rush is him essentially just parking himself in a really vulnerable, awkward spot of Doubt's economy, and he's just harassing these farmers by dealing basically no damage to them, but he's just and this is 25% cheaper. Now, here comes a really crucial fight, and it's going to come down to clean micro. Because, again, these scouts destroy 
those skirms. But the spearmen are well positioned, forcing the scouts to retreat, allowing the skirmishers to actually focus fire down the enemy skirms. And is this being controlled correctly? It's hard to say. But I'm going to say that this is going to go to doubt here. These skirmishers are taking so many free hits from those scouts because they can't afford to fight back in minimum range. And doubt. That is some very, very good control on his part. You see how he moved the fight to the left. That way, he could have the hill advantage with the skirmishers and deal 25% additional damage with them, as well as take 25% reduced. But MBL, he's lost it. He's gone off the deep end. He's gone full break the meta. It's true. Scale mail armor for his spearmen to resist the skirmisher shots. You madman. I'm pretty sure Skirmishers have like a plus one attack bonus versus Spearman or something like that. It's not that significant. But the thing is here though, is by going for a build like this, you're just making life really awkward for doubt. You are. If you manage to guess your opponent's build correctly, and he happens to go for scouts, and he happens to be the Teutons, like in this case, what you're doing is you're forcing him to make, what, continue making scouts probably because he doesn't have resources to transition to something else that easily. He needs to build the building first. And you're forcing him to mass up Skirms. And your skirms and your spears are way cheaper than his army, allowing you to just effectively outnumber him. So your army is trash. But one man's trash is MBL's treasure. He just has the numbers advantage here. 31 to 19. So he's a solid 10 military unit lead. Look how hard it is for him to kill any villagers at all. But he's still able to just sit, he just parks his army inside Doubt's base. This is how you flex on people, by the way, on Age of Empires 2. As you walk inside their wall off, and you park in here with trash units. Again, it's going to come down to good micro. Who's got it better this time? Because Doubt had it better before. And the spearmen are not on the scouts. They are not. Doubt is microing this one a little bit better. But, aha, the spearmen do get the focus fire, and now they're coming in. Doubt's not pulling back his scouts. He thinks he can still win this fight, but that's going to be a mistake because the spearmen are alive. He needs to use his skirmishers to focus fire down the spearmen and try and take them down. That way the scouts can clean up the rest of these skirmishers. Because he doesn't have plus one defense, and he kind of... Well, okay, you actually don't need plus one defense against this army. Uh, but ideally, you want bloodlines. You want bloodlines for a number of reasons. Uh, one, because Bloodlines means the Spearmen kill you in four hits and not three, which is absolutely critical in this matchup. But two, um, it just means that the scouts you're kind of forced to commit yourself to because you just don't have wood to build anything else right now. Uh, build another military building. It makes them just a lot better. So, Doubt, I would say, in the end, came on the top of that engagement. Why? Because once again, MBL's army is literally trash. Oh, Skirmish Deal plus three versus Spears. Thank you, Corvette, for the uh, correction. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream, uh, T90 Official. Good to see ya. Hey, 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 Tristan. So. But the thing is, is 26 military units to nine. Because Dow's got to make the decision, right? Am I going to cut back on my military production? Go to the Castle Age? Well, yeah, I mean, I kind of have to, right? I kind of have to. Otherwise, I'm in deep trouble. And that's exactly what he had to do. Meanwhile, MBL... Doesn't really, because he's been saving 25% on his car insurance by switching to Byzantines. And every single skirmisher that he makes, and every single spearman he makes, costs him like nothing. It's so funny to see him make, actually destroy buildings with an army that effectively deals nothing. Now, Doubt's response here is really, really interesting. I think he's a super safe base. Look at him mass rallying villagers onto gold, and then he's gonna get the gold mining upgrade, He's getting bloodlines. He's clearly going for knights, right? And he's also going to use the gold that he's going to mine to correct his economy by purchasing other resources at the market. But, there we go. He's buying 100 food. That way he'll be able to produce knights because he has no space to farm because MBL is applying so much pressure with these spearmen and these skirmishers, which is unbelievable. He built a second barracks, which is why he's getting away with this. He just, basically, he's just able to outproduce the Teutons. Now the Teutons grabbing that scale barding armor. Why? Well, it helps when we're dealing with elite skirmishers, which the cost did get reduced on them. So they do have three attacks, so it definitely helps uh, to resist the attacks just a little bit further. And MBL in the Castle Age immediately starts researching arson at one of his barracks because he's been destroying so many buildings. He's going for arson spearmen. Never in my life, in Age of Empires 2 history, and if you've been enjoying this so far, 
You have to watch every single other episode of Break the Meta because they're just as insane, if not more insane. The Elite Skirmisher upgrade's down, and you know what that signifies to MBL? I'm gonna sit underneath your town center because I have four pierce armor. Four plus one. <laughs> he, takes, he takes only two damage. What? Wait, no, five? No, yeah. He takes one damage. You take nothing. Good day, sir. He gets freaking arson. And he's using arson spearmen to take down these houses, and now he's researching the pikemen upgrade for that crucial additional one damage to buildings. No, seriously, this, this build is sick. <laughs> sick. Ah, now Doubt's going for the plus two defense knights to try and take this down. But that's just not going to work. And I think that he made a really, really big mistake a minute ago. We just saw he sold 200 stone. Just try and bolster his economy and try and support three stable production. Because again, he's got no space to farm because he lost this mill and then he rebuilt this mill. And now we're seeing another crucial fight. But again, by doing that, what he's doing is... He has such a safe map back here. He should be building another town center, I think, and booming up. Because the weakness of this strategy is that you can't get past the town center. You can't get through stone walls or anything. But he sold his stone. If he just... If Doubt actually, like... I think he had two options there. You build a siege workshop and you're trying to defend with a mangonel. Or... You build a town center, like, right here. And you just try, just try and outboom your opponent. Because what you're doing right now is you're allowing MBL to flex on you and build town center in the middle of the map. <laughs> like a madman. Like an absolute madman. Allowing him to build town centers. So, not only are you going to be behind militarily, but you're also behind from an eco standpoint. <sighs> Doubt desperately looking for a pickoff, but he's about to get piked. There's no way he can... Knights are not the answer here, but unfortunately... That's just what he ended up going with, because he, he felt like he had enough, like that was the best answer to the skirmishers, but I think that you could hide behind your town center permanently, basically, provided you have a siege workshop with like a mangonel or maybe even some scorpions behind it. And I think selling that stone was honestly a crucial mistake, and that he's falling behind in villagers now, and it's a 48 to 8 military population. When you have 40 more military... Oh my god, I mean, 40 more military units than your opponent. Something is fucked up in Age of Empires right now. That is amazing. That is amazing. And again, he's going to fall behind in military units too. Doubt in absolute deep trouble here. The chainmail armor coming down. Look at these arson pikemen. How many buildings has he destroyed with the Byzantine's demolition crew? When Scission put arson in the game, I don't think he anticipated this would be how it would be used. But look at that mill just go down. Insult to injury. Again, I just think that... Doubt should have probably played this defensively. Like, when you... This is when this strategy works. Is when your opponent is actually trying to fight you with expensive military units instead of just playing super defensively. Because your army is weak. Yeah, you have a lot of them. You probably have 45 more military units than your opponent. Dropping a double forward barracks! Gah! MBL, marry me! My, my god. Mein Gott in Himmel! This is beautiful, beautiful AOC right here. So, selling that stone is even a bigger mistake because, like I said earlier, Doubt doesn't have safe stone that he can mine at all. And that's another reason why MBL is able to get away with this because he knows that not only will he outnumber him militarily, but he should eventually be able to outnumber him economically. He, he's map control with pikemen and elite skirmishers. He's camping doubt in his own base. And that shouldn't be too much of a problem because your main gold is so safe and you have so much space back here. You've got two wood lines. You could be building town centers. Like, doubt is able to hold on because his knights are good units. But, but, it's just not good enough. When your opponent is dropping three barracks on you. <laughs> The villager difference isn't that significant, but the military difference is absolutely massive. The knights, you can see why he's going for them here. If you can keep the pikemen population down low and you focus fire them, which he's doing exactly right now, then you just destroy the elite skirmishers and clean them up so quickly. But the moment the pikemen come in to reinforce like they do now, then all the knights are just going to die. And it's just a, not a resource efficient trade at this point. But MBL, again, it's a combination of things. It's the map and what his opponent is doing and just an overall lack of information. He knows that the secondary gold mine for Doubt, the ideal one, is actually at the front with, the, with his main stone. Therefore, if he applies significant offensive pressure and he guesses the strategy correctly and scouts it, 
then he's good to go. Doubt's gonna call GG, as he just got, he lost to Arson Pikeman with three wolves. <laughs> GG, well played. MBL secures an impressive victory because he read the map, seeing that this is a very crucial point to pressure. Deny the secondary gold, the stone, and he knows as well there's another stone mine over here. Doubt has no stone, and he even sold his own stone. That's how you know he's nuts. <laughs> but he felt like, the reason he did that, again, it's not necessarily a misplay. It's very easy for me to point this out as a caster. I do this for your own future reference, is that he did that because at the time, it seemed like a good idea to get that big power spike of resources from selling the stone because it trades so efficiently for gold at the market uh, to be able to produce knights from three stables and hopefully overwhelm this army. That works a lot of the time. It works... It's less efficient versus the Byzantines. I would say that the Byzantines usually have the edge there, honestly, provided that they have enough barracks to, to produce a significant amount of pikemen, and the control is there. The control, though, was, I think, overwhelmingly in favor of Doubt. Uh, I think that he had the better micro. It's just that his unit choice, the knight, he actually managed to get countered here. And what's really cool is how MBL used his army to actually make this strategy work. So not only is this situational, but it also takes some very, very careful execution. He just camped this area, because he knows he can't get past the town center. And he was raising buildings with arson. Arson in 2018. <laughs> killed that mill twice, killed all those houses, causing doubt all sorts of trouble, keeping him 40 population down uh, from his max, and just kind of forcing him to sell his stone. I just really think he should, uh, you know, maybe build a siege workshop, get a mangonel out, hide behind your town center, keep your villagers inside here, you know, stonewall this, stonewall that, and just try and hang out over here, and maybe you'd be able to come back. Because the Teutons are considered to be the trash slayer civilization. If he's ever able to get at a castle and build a Teutonic Knights or anything, then pff, this army's toast. But the Byzantines can also just build, uh, they can build Arbalest or hand cannoneers very easily. Castle is never really an option, though, for doubt, let's be real. He probably would have had to build a siege workshop, boom up a bit, maybe over champs or something, uh, or just mass up knights at the back. I feel like he just needed that stone really badly, uh, and he was a victim of both bad map generation and also just really good plays from MBL. Recognizing the scout rush was fairly obvious. He scouted it, he saw it. He came, he saw, he conquered, he countered. And... You know you've lost the game when you don't have map control against a guy who's making no gold cost units. And how is MBL getting away with this type of production, by the way? You might be wondering. Because uh, his army is huge, okay? 44? He had like a 45 military unit lead at one point. How is he doing this? Because he was buying food and wood at the market and heavily mining gold. How many gold miners does he have? He has 15! And he's spending them only on upgrades and on food and wood for his eco to just overwhelm Doubt. This is a strategy I just don't think Doubt was prepared for. Like, normally the Master Knights would work if MBL wasn't breaking the meta and doing something insane, which is using his market to buy food and wood to make more pikemen and more skirmishers. Because I, I don't think Doubt thought that, because the fights were close, they were. I don't think Doubt thought that he would just get outproduced so badly. And the answer is it all lies in the all lies in the market. So, GG well played. I think Doubt honestly had some very good micro, some good decision making here. Good of him to close off this back area and then, you know, try and seed some farms back here. And he also used the market a lot as well too. But a lack of town centers and everything and just some poor map generation at the front really put him in a little bit of a pickle. Uh, in comparison, you know, MBL gets to get away with this strategy because his main gold is at the back. It's very safe. I mean, so is Doubts, of course. But he also has, like, a stone at the back. Uh, his map isn't really wallable, but that's okay when you're the one applying all the pressure. Doubts' map is wallable, but it doesn't matter when you've got an army of pikemen and skirmishers parked in your base. So, GG well played.
What a great game here. As we can see from the units killed versus units lost, again, this game was much closer than it seems, but the largest army of 60 is heavily attributed to MBL's ab absolute abuse of the market in his mass pikemen and elite skirmisher strategy. And again, he did every little thing he could to secure some early wins. Like by bringing in those three wolves at the start really helped him out a lot. He raised six buildings with arson. Nice. With spearmen and pikemen. Nice. Neither player collected any stone. That's not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. Ah. Uh, this, this was a closer game than it seems. It's just that... It's so funny to see MBL mine almost 2,500 gold and spend it exclusively on upgrades and at the market for buying food and wood. <laughs> it is. Uh, Doubt did have some opportunities, by the way, to buy 100 stone to build a town center if you wanted. This game is closer than it seems, but unfortunately he, he missed that opportunity. I actually think that a defensive siege workshop might have been the better play, especially considering that... Doubt didn't have that much access to safe farmland, but he did have a safe main gold and several safe wood lines, so I think a mangonel would have... He could have just hid behind his town center, have a mangonel, maybe a scorpion. Ooh, they're getting crazy. And then maybe slowly push out, you know, again, just try and bait units into your town center, slowly push out, mix in some knights too if you'd like, and secure that hill... Then get the stone mine, the gold mine, win the game. But it's easier said than done, it really is. And I don't think he saw this coming, this all-in style trash play. And hopefully, you all enjoyed watching this episode of Break the Meta. Is this episode 25? Let me double check real quick. This is episode 25, cool! Now, normally I prefer to do these not live, but sometimes I will do them live based off my schedule. It's been a very busy week. And thank you so much to all of you for showing your support. Uh, if you enjoyed this, then I, you gotta watch every episode of Break the Meta, as well as the other stuff I post on my channel. Uh, if you support the content that I do for Games Beyond Just AOE 2, it really helps not only grow my channel, but also expose more people to the AOE 2 community. And it just motivates me to continue producing awesome content like this and do some digging for some really strange replays. Honestly, yeah, the wolves were pretty good, pretty good. We gotta find a tutorial for this man. What a what a nuts strategy. What an absolutely nuts strategy. Fast feudal mass Byzantines trash rush. And yes, it will cast one more game after this. And on a final note, uh, please do support me on Patreon. You can see the link on the screen. Uh, even super small pledges can help out quite a bit. Uh, consider subscribing to me if you can. If you use Amazon Prime, which at this point I think almost everyone does. You can subscribe to me for free, for free, with Twitch Prime. And also, I encourage you to follow my various social media pages. Links are all on the screen, and everything you need is in the video description below, or if you're watching live on Twitch, it is also below the video player. I'm going to cast another game after this. I'll be right back, uh, so stay tuned, stay tuned. And as always, thank you so much for the support. I look forward to, I look forward to seeing all your likes and comments. GG well played. Oh, and uh, not sure if I got Moon Sorrow's sub. Uh, I don't think I saw a sub from Tokuraka in my notifications. Um, uh, if he did, though, uh, I I say thank you, Tokuraka, but I do not see it. So anyway, we'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, and please do follow the channel. And subscribe on YouTube. Uh, apparently, uh, a lot of... The, YouTube has this new thing where if you subscribe and you don't click that little bell icon, you don't get notifications when I upload a new video, which I attribute a lot of my people missing my videos to, so click the bell, I guess. But yeah, thank you. Oh, and fun fact. Uh, if you have no money and you don't skip the... Uh, so if you watch, like, I think it's, what, like, 30 seconds of an ad or something? Uh, then I actually get money. If you skip it, I don't, though, so. But don't watch four minutes of an ad. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Thank you.